So, hello and welcome again to another watercolour painting demonstration. Today we're uh, at Wormagay, um, near the church. I've already pre-wet the paper, as you can see, and we're just going to get straight into this. A beautiful spring day. Remember to use the whole arm when you're painting, if you're going to do this style of loose watercolour. We're going to mix up a few greys and a few blues. We're going to pop in some cerulean and pop in some ultramarine. Uh, Popping that in there. Looking for the, the where the clouds uh, break and cloud shadows and also trying to make sure that we can get in as well as possible. the feel of, of, of a windy day. Although it doesn't look too windy, I guess, in this video, this film, it really was a windy day, so much so that I'm having to overdub this vocal because it, the quality of the, the audio just wasn't good enough. So, just using the tip of the brush to, to dab in some of these shadows uh, and the main thing really is to remember as the sky goes towards the horizon the clouds are obviously look further away um, and so you want them smaller as you come down we'll warm up as well here near the near our focal point this big tree just need to be careful not to put in too much color because we do need to design the, a focal point, which is the tree. And just dabbing in and softening off with the tissue. Um, so we have some soft edges and we have some sharp edges within the clouds. Kind of lots of fluffy clouds today there. Hopefully you can see that. And then really, we're gonna to have to wait for that to dry before we can start to work on the tree, but we need to now get into some uh, foreground work. So we're gonna be mixing up some of this distance, this middle distance, a kind of yellow mix there. It's a little bit of raw sienna, a little bit of cadmium yellow. It's kind of spring green, that's what we've got going across. And we've also got triangles here so we've got this triangular composition triangle uh, block in the middle and a triangular um, block here in the foreground we'll go a bit stronger with our raw sienna and a touch of cadmium yellow just to warm it up down here and make it ping ping what a great word ping and that's kind of it for the first wash Using the whole arm again. Just testing to see if the sky is drying off yet. Just checking and seeing what else we need to pop in. And we're just gonna gonna suggest some distant trees in this blue-gray mixture. This is uh, Payne's gray and cobalt blue that we've got going on here. Hopefully you can see that, just dragging the side of the brush down. And then we're gonna use clear water to soften that off. Move the board back a little bit to encourage the pigment, the paint, to spread. And just dab in a touch more pigment along the top there. Just for a little bit of variation. and then clear water again. Just so we don't get any sharp edges there in that distance. And also soften off the tops of that with clear water so we've got some wet into wet rather than it all being a sharp edge. And then we use the tissue just to dab out in places to create a few highlights in those distant trees.
just remembering to take out more of the pigment around the focal point. So we need that to be the lightest light and darkest dark where the eye will go first. Just testing up in the sky just to make sure it's dry enough before we start to paint. And the, the main thing is to understand that you're kind of in control of your painting as you go along. You don't need to rush and waste it. There's it, kind of, you know, all the time in the world, thinking time and so on. We are working quite fast here. I've painted hundreds, probably thousands of paintings over the last 45 years. So once you've done it quite a few times, you get the, the feel of how it needs to go. And I start with a traditional way of um, starting with the sky and, and working my way forward, basically. Getting in that first wash, getting in some background trees in this case. And then start to work a little bit more on the detail with a finer brush. So we're going to mix up some ultramarine, some Payne's Grey. And it's dry enough here to now start to work on with this number two round brush. It's in a Skoda travel brush. And we can work on with some of these darks. And I normally start out with the, with the trunk of the tree, but that's a little bit damp. So we're just going to get stuck in to some of this branch and tr twiggery work. And you can see holding the brush near the end of it, so it's loose. If I'd gone and moved my hand right the way down nearer the bristles of the brush, it would be more like a like a drawing technique, and that's not what we're doing here. We we kind of keep in the looseness. Just lifting off. So you push on and lift off. You can see if you look at the tip of the brush, it's lifting off. It's just a slight adjustment of the hand. You're just basically lifting your hand up a little bit. And then looking at the shapes that we had there, there we go, lifting off. So you just get that pushing down, you can see this, the bristles are bent. And then as we go up, they kind of straighten up. And it's just keeping this whole thing going and looking for the designs. There are three trees, kind tree trunks kind of inter interwoven here. And the middle one is um, a bit lighter. I'm gonna change over brushes in a second because this really is a little bit too small to be doing this. Just got a bit excited there. So we do need a, a bigger brush. Not good to paint with the wrong size brush for the job. And it really is just tickling the brush along, making sure we've got plenty of paint, that the brush is loaded up with paint. And on a day like today, the mixtures in the palette, they dry really quickly. So we need to keep an eye on that as well. Delicate little brush strokes here. And then just some, some random dry brush there. Go for some foreshortening in a second. That means turning to come towards the viewer. Otherwise, the tree will look two dimensional and not three dimensional. In reality, there are thousands and thousands of twigs and branches coming out here. Hundreds of branches, thousands of twigs. We're just kind of getting the feel of it. I'm not gonna lavishly paint every single one. We might as well take a photograph if we're gonna do into that. It's just getting the, the feel. And just enjoy my day. Ease that round towards the viewer. Just 
gonna go in with the same the same mixtures ultramarine Payne's grey drop some liquid in there it doesn't matter I can just take that out with clear water and we're back with a bigger brush Strengthen up some of the shadows in this trunk and painting now into the, the next tree as well. I've got another 12 round here. Number 12 round brush. If anyone interested, this is a pro art brush. Just a, a lighter mixture we're putting in here, just to create some tonal, tonal changes. And then popping in some softer sort of shadows because we're painting into the light, the shadows are coming towards us. And the sun shone at this moment, so I was able to quickly look at what was going on. We're going to pop in now some of these fence posts. Soften off with some clear water. Main thing is that we're retaining the light, and at the moment we've got plenty of light in the painting. Putting in these crossbars on the on the fence. Again, not being too fussy about it, just getting them in and then leaving it alone. I was trying to get them to the idea that it's getting smaller as we go to the left. terms of the fence posts which will lead the eye kind of through the painting there we go if we put it all the way across it just it would block us off so we need to make sure that we don't just put the fence posts all the way across we're going to leave a gap there otherwise we're kind of blocking out the viewer and now we'll pop in some darker notes with these background trees as well this again is Cobalt blue and a touch of Payne's grey. And it's just a, a shape. And some clear water just to run down to soften off the edge. Just dampen off the tops there just to wet into wet really so it's not too too sharp everywhere our mixture going into a slightly smaller brush the number six the Skoda just to finish off these posts and put in some darker notes with some Payne's grey Yeah, I'm not keen on this. As I said earlier, I tried it, but no, we didn't want to exclude the viewer. So by popping in that extra fencing, it just kind of cut us off there. We need to make sure that we've got the design going right and space. So we've popped in some more green mixture and we're just gonna, gonna take out some of this pigment with a tissue. While it's damp, we can work with this without a problem. I knew it already instinctively, but I had to have a go because that was what was in front of me, the, this fence going all the way across, but from a compositional sense, it just doesn't work. So let's take it out as the artist, artistic license and all of that jazz. 
So we can, uh, we can do what we want. It's the overall effect that counts for the painting. But what we can do is pop in a little, a little hedgerow, kind of tonally um, in the mid-range there, not too, too dark, and that's not going to hurt. So we're back on the number 12 brush, round. So the fly jumped in there. Plenty of flies around, horse flies starting to come out. Just darken up some of these shadows. Taking out some mixture there, just scratching in some shape, some slight highlights. The sun was coming in from the right hand side, so just testing this foreground as dry before we go into the next, next movement. Middle distance trees here. They were coming up from behind that bank. Much smaller, obviously, because they're further away. Just getting the, the, the bare shape of them. Again, using the mixture of Payne's Grey, touch of Ultramarine, and a bit more raw umber. Burnt umber, not raw umber. Raw umber is your green. And of course, we need to get some fo spring foliage in here as well. starting to run just clear water again and popping in a bit more pigment touch of raw sienna Darkening up this hedgerow. Just dabbing in some bits that are going to bleed in. Just encourage it by tilting back the board. And there we go. Take out some of these strange blobs that appear as you're painting. But as I paint, they appear all the time. I'm quite messy painting. Uh, again, just dabbing in, in the light. Clear water again on the edge. So that just bleeds down. cadmium yellow and, and a slight touch of um, cobalt blue just to put in these just early spring the signs of 
freshness, fresh leaves coming through. Just kind of scraping across the edge. Like putting the brush onto its side and just scraping across. Just a kind of dry brush, leaving little chinks of light to come through. And that's probably enough there. And now we need to come through to the um, popping in the shadow color, almost done now. This is the kind of the bit that I get excited about because this, we put the shadows in and that's when everything changes. We just end up pulling the whole painting together. So it's gonna be a near famous mixture of ultramarine blue and crimson just going to pop in these shadows. They're obviously coming towards us because the light's behind the, the tree. And they kind of blur off as well. The shadows doing, the tree shadows doing grass. Keeping them nice and liquidy. You need to strengthen those up. Uh, we've got the posts shadows coming in as well. Just popping a little bit more pigment. I need to soften off that end. Something to note in nature that has shadows tend not to be very crisp when they get to the end of the shadow if that makes sense so at the base of the shadow they're normally stronger and as they come away to the end of that shadow they get weaker and disperse much of the time they become let's pop in a bit more pigment at the base here we go just let that run blend and bleed do its own thing see what effect it, it creates. You can use the same mixture as well because there are shadows, quite a lot of them back in this far distance. Again, clear water, just to soften off on the edges. Changing brushes now. A final brush. Just popping this foreshortened branch that's coming towards us. Foreshortening helps with the three-dimensional illusion on the on a, obviously a flat piece of paper, two-dimensional paper. Let's put in some darker shadow as well. While we're there, get that in. and just put in some of these finer tweaks. The sun just came out and just can now see a whole bunch more shadows. This happens a lot. You're painting something, you get half an hour, 20 minutes, half an hour down, and you're like, whoa, it's looking different. Trying to get this painting done within under and half an hour, 20 minutes ideally. If you go and beyond that, can start to lose its freshness with this style. It means you're kind of fiddling around rather than just getting the the essential, the essence. Just suggestions, impressions. This is an impressionistic, post-impressionistic really style of watercolor painting. So this is what the uh, final painting looks like. Now the tape's all off. Um, yeah, back in the studio, the camera battery died near the end, but you didn't miss much. You can see the shadows down there in the foreground. Um, and I just popped in a small uh, branch here, but other than that, and a few birds. 
just up there. A few crows that were passing by. And that's it. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Remember to like, to subscribe, to ring that notification bell, and I'll catch you next time. Happy painting.